ruining that? What? to hearing I remember I was in church because I know find a church I found I found a church some people that I love and I love them and I'm grateful to them for accepting me as wholeheartedly as they have and I'm getting comfortable in there but I I have not decided to fully commit to joining becoming a member of the body because of this thing and I remember being in church a Sunday two weeks before and you know the pastor she was about to have a meeting and she said hey sister Vanessa I think it's time that you decide that you want to be a part of the body and just before she had said that I felt it in my spirit that it's time for me to join the body and I remember rebutting and saying to the Holy Spirit um but you know I have this in you know I have this in front of me you know I have it and and, and it's not it's not resolved and I don't want to be a hypocrite and I don't want to live a life that by this time I am lukewarm I barely can pray the person that I used to be in Christ. I'm not that person anymore. I'm barely reading my Bible. And as soon as I would get um, to the point where I'm reading my Bible again and I'm praying again, things in the relationship would get hot. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And then as soon as it would get hot and I'm going in that direction, it would get cold. And I'm and it's, so it's like I, I'm torn between the two things. And I literally, literally, and I'm not even not, I pretend, I literally am torn between these two things. And in my head, and this is a bad decision, so if you're thinking of making decisions, decision, don't do it. I said, God, you can do anything, and I'm bringing this man to you for you to fix him for me. Anyways, and so two weeks before that happened, and I remember praying, and I said, God, I'm going to leave, obviously, because every time we break up, I will break up many times. Every time I break up, I go back. Every time I break up. And him come back. Me go back every time we break up. And him come back. Me take him back. Me need. I need to know what's happening. I need to see it without a shadow of a doubt. I say God, because every time before now something like this had cropped up, he would explain it away in the most sincere way possible. And I say God, I don't want it to be able to be explained away. I don't want to be able to be lied to. And and believe that lie. I need you to show me and show me clearly. Don't hint, cause obviously. Me not taking hints, just show me plainly, clearly, set me free, and then this happened. And even in the midst of that, you know, me a ball, and 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 I'm crying because, like, how oh, somebody could have lead somebody on you talking about marriage and you talking about you wanting a family and you met my family and you're so intertwined in my life and you know we seem to be planning. Even though as me said, it hot it cold, it hot it cold, it hot it cold. But yes, these things are happening, and you you know you you're saying, oh Vanessa, just bear with me, just 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 have patience and just this and just that. And I'm literally sitting here now. I've wasted a whole year, almost two years of my life with you, and this now is this, what is this? And I remember I'm crying out to God and I'm saying, God, how could this happen to me? You know. How could he do this and da da da? And I'm 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 angry. I'm sad. I'm upset. But you know what really touched me when I'm talking to God? Pure, clean. I'm being as honest and open as I can with God. I mean, uh, you know, this is the Father of the world, King of the world, King of heaven and earth, and Creator of all things. And me talk plain and straight. I'm saying, God, me can't believe this reached me. How come? What go on? How it go? And convicted in that moment that God said, hello, I knew who he was. I knew what this man was about. I told you time and time again to walk away. What we need to talk about is why you don't trust me to take care of you. Hey, double dose of crying. Because now I had to look within myself and see the reasons why I was being manipulated and allowing myself to be manipulated. I was listening to the lies and choosing to believe the lies. Come I know some of them are lies. I mean, no, some of the things I remember him telling me in grandmother cancer, not of that nature. Him telling me that a cousin of his died. Him telling me that another cousin was shot and killed. And I know because I would always go behind his back and try to find a source that could verify the information. And none of those things have been verified. So they were lies. Remember to the point when he, when he told me about the cousin being shot and killed, I called the police station or the place that he, he said it happened. And the policeman was over. The policeman said, who tell you that? When? Nothing of that nature, miss. 
And so I knew that they were lies and I knew that I was being manipulated. So God said to me, why don't you trust me to take care of you? Do Why are you not submitted to me in this area? And it was true. I now had to face the fact that I did not give God my everything and my all. Right? Lukewarm girl. Your girl did not trust God. And so did not trust God to provide. It's like I didn't trust him to provide a spouse for me. Anyways, me a cry, me a weep, me a mourn, see me. I know I'm... I'm not so much hurt by that, but I'm repentant to the point that I have betrayed God for my own desires that has almost killed me because the pain I'm feeling is like nothing I've ever experienced before. And I'm crying day after day after day and I hear clearly in my spirit, arise, take up your bed and walk. And I'm like, what? But... And God's like, listen, what did you lose? <laughs> what did you lose? You asked me to show you. I've shown you. The desires that you have are not for this person. Cool? You need to let it go. I may struggle with it. Because not only am I hurt, but I'm angry. And I'm angry to the point where I want to knock him upside his forehead. Like, why are you that do that? And God reminded me plainly that vengeance is mine. And in the same way I was patient with you while you was out there being disobedient to me and while you were out there following the desires and lusts of your heart and you were out there doing, acting contrary to my will, I will be merciful and patient with him. Right? And it's almost in that moment. It's like more just one of us. I have come down. Come on, we'll fight. I'll fight. We need to go fight. But hello? <laughs> It was tumultuous, to say the least. And now God is dealing with me and I'm having to face the Vanessa that was always there, but I'd never acknowledged. For example, God said to me, your idea of guarding yourself is by using the flaws, the flaws, the trauma that the things that have happened to you, you use that as a guard. That's not what you're told to guard yourself with. Put on the whole armor of God. God convicted me. There were things that I was holding on to that had happened to me in my past. And I felt that they some in some way or another made me unworthy of true love. Or if me not fight for the love, the love not really. You know, you have to come out and tussle and put on your boxing glove and yeah. And God said to me, why do you think you need to fight to prove your worthiness to others and then i was even saying because if we're honest and i'm not being rude i'm not being mean this person was not my type this person was not my type physically this person was not my type spiritually this person was not my type emotionally this person was not my type intellectually there was really nothing other than me choosing to give him a chance that is the only reason why we became intertwined because that we barely had anything in common, right? And when it came on to the things of God which were important to me, he didn't see them with as much importance as I did. He didn't even understand who the Holy Spirit was, what the Holy Spirit's um, um, work was in the life of the believer. And though I am not judging anybody based on their lack of knowledge, it was something for me that I was just like, mm. but at the same time, I'm like, he can learn, he can become. He can, and he can, you know, and I'm not writing him off to say he can never. And God might very well save him and turn him into a wonderful man of God. And I pray that that is what happens. But at the time, I wanted it to be done according to my will and not the will of God. And so in that moment, I basically turned my back on God to say, if you not fix him the way me want to fix him, me I go fix him, I'm going to back and we go, we go, so we're going to do it. That almost took my life. I was so depressed. I was so sad. And in this moment, um, I don't know myself. I'm, I'm going about my daily life, you know, and I look fine, but I'm not fine. And having to come to terms with the things that I thought I wasn't worthy of this love, this easy love, this love, like finding somebody who genuinely loves me, loves me for who I am, and not only loves me, but loves God. Me feel like me want to take them up and brush them off and bring them to God and say, ooh, 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 how about this one? How about this one? And that's not how it goes. And I had to come to terms with the fact that I was not surrendered in that area of my life. I did not surrender my desire completely to God. I thought I had, but I hadn't. And I remember I'm going through, again, this sad time and this this time where I'm so down and out. And 
I remember God reminding me of a prayer that I'd prayed at one point or another. I don't even remember when I prayed, but I remember the prayer care clearly. I was telling God about the man that I hope he has for me. And I was saying, God, I want a man who loves you with his whole heart, who is surrendered, submitted to you, a priest over his home, a man who knows how to war in the realms of the spirit and when he's called to prayer he can cover his family under the blood of jesus christ he can storm hell gate he can pray he knows when he is wrong he's accountable not only to himself but to you and to um he's under headship which is something i wasn't under initially when we met and it was important to me i'm saying a man who has found discipleship in other men who can show him the way to go and a man who doesn't consider himself proud I remember God reminding me of the things that I would prayed for and basically saying, you didn't have that. And I would have given that to you had you waited on me, had you followed me. But now we see why I wouldn't have given it to you at that time either because I was never submitted enough to God. I wasn't ready, but I thought I was ready. Never ready. Thought I was ready. And God said to me, you know, and when I say God said to me, I feel it in my spirit and... You know, I can hear God speaking to me through his words and God speaks to me through his words, through song. And sometimes I audibly hear his instructions or his words. Um, he said to me that this is what you've asked me for, a godly man. And I want to give you a godly man. What you were involved in was not a gift from me because it was taking you away from me. Now, I am saddened because I had spent so much of my time out of the presence of God and where I would have been in terms of deeper depths, higher heights, wider width in my relationship with God and in submission with God and getting to know him better and carrying out the word that he has for me, whatever that is, I am now set back. And it is because of my own disobedience. It is because of my own pride. Because you know what? Admit, hey, you made a bad choice. I made a bad choice. I made a bad choice. Didn't want to admit that my wants is that sorry, it's like a cook and the pot spoil. Pot spoil. But the people let me tell us everybody put something in it, never gonna work out. But you in your head, no, you have to you know me a fix up at here. I don't know me do. And the more you add <laughs> to the mixture, the worse it gets. But I was so not necessarily so much proud as ashamed as well to say I'd made a bad choice and to walk away from that. And I went through a dark season and I'm so grateful to my friends. Mm -hmm. Love on a world without end. Like when I can't imagine the people who prayed with me, the people who just gonna look for me as a rose type of ball in a man. <laughs> the people who spoke life into me while I was going through that season. I love you guys ever so much. And so when I realized where I was, the only thing I could do was to lay at the feet of the father and cry out to God and say, Do brush me off. Please, you see that story of the prodigal son when he was eating and wallowing with the pigs and he thought about what his father's house was like and how there was abundance there but he was sitting in luck. I know exactly what that little boy was going through because me, I said to myself, how oh, did I get here? For a man who was nothing that I wanted and me decided to give him a chance in my life, no one would tell me say, but I know you my want sis and you mash up my life now because you find out about the whole debacle and you try. What is wrong with you? To wrap my head around that, to wrap my heart around that and to admit that it was some fault of mine as well for allowing myself to be manipulated, to not follow the instructions of God and to not trust God enough to believe him. Even when everything that he was saying was in alignment with what I was seeing, I trusted my heart over God and the Bible tells you about trusting your heart mm. Mm. and so I ended up in a place of just yam headery to say the least utter yam headery yam head go, go and come because I'm forcing something to be that is not meant to be and knowing that God knew who he was and knew what was happening and saw the whole play and was trying to protect me but I decided you know some bad pitney well, yeah, I said, no, go out there. And then this side said, I'm going to go in. He said, all right, go on. Trusting that you will come back. But yeah, go feel. You can hear. You're going to feel. And so, yeah, that happened. And it was a dark time. And day by day, I thought I was going to die physically. Like, I think my brother got just stopped to how everything is just 
just drop down for me like one big bag of clay and I don't know what to do, I don't know how to deal with this, I don't know how to handle this. And then y'all know where I'm from, it's a small place. I'm seeing these people and I'm seeing them and you know, he and the girl or the other young lady, they're gold and they're carrying on their relationship and I'm just like, man! <laughs> but if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? And so saying this to say, one, even in mentioning God on my YouTube, because on my channel, like there were times and I'd say, you know, I tried to pray about stuff and I felt so convicted though, because me and me I pray about it, but me not live no life. Me can't minister to people because me not live no life. Me can't talk to people about God and express the goodness of God because me not live no life. And it is holding me down and it has squeezed me out like rag and me just don't know what to do. Right? I felt so empty so far from God, so lacking. And I still decided to me not let me plant like the tree of child. And as my mother would have said, I sat there looking. And I'm grateful nevertheless that God heard my prayer in that moment to just show me and save me. And he did. And I'm saying this to somebody because I really had doubts about doing this video. And if you don't watch it and have anything to say, if you don't want to call me auntie, yam, and don't, don't, don't into the, the go right ahead. Because I was a yam head and nothing not good. Is there a good yam head? Don't know. But a yam head to this man and walking away from my father, God. And I've had to forgive myself for that and accept God's forgiveness and to forgive the people, not the people, the man who wronged me in being um, disingenuous and whatever, leading me on knowing that he never wanted anything serious because he was just doing the only thing he knew how to do. I had to come to the place to forgive him and to let it go. I am in a place now where I can talk about it and I can not cry and I'm okay and da 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 da, da and... It wasn't an overnight process and it's still not so I don't think I'm fully fully um, over all of it and everything there are still days when I remember stuff that never made any sense to me when it happened and now I go oh and I just laugh and keep it moving but I didn't want to do this video because I did I wasn't necessarily sure how it would be received and to be honest right now I just if a one person watch if one young lady one young man who loved the Lord walking after the precepts of God and you just see this like a young man or this like a young girl come and them sound like and them move like and them talk like but only a form of godliness tell them say in the name of Jesus pack up your things hey get the bad mm -mm. Hello, no, 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 it is not worth it. I'm saying this to say it is not worth it. No matter what you think or what the person is, it is not worth it. No matter what the person I do, no matter how they present themselves, if they do not know God, and even if they say they know God, the Bible said by their fruit, you shall know them. If they're supposed to have beer, orange, and pineapple, or whatever fruit, and you're not seeing that, trust God and trust the word of God. God not leave you, not forsake you, not lead you down the wrong path. Do not allow yourself to be pulled away and pulled after things that you desire. And if you realize that you're going in that direction, ask yourself, why? Is it that I'm not submitted enough? Is it that I don't trust God enough in this area? And it may not be the area of relationship. It may be the area of business. You're encouraged now to go into some business with some people who are of less than um, reputable character. But you know, so them always get money. And you won't go down that way because you've been trying it the right way for so long and it doesn't seem to be working for you. Hello. Come here. Sit here, so Don't do it. The end is worse than you could ever imagine. And go, though God is merciful, you know, Consequences are there for your actions. They will have to stand up to them. He will stand in the valley of the shadow of death with you, you know. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but if I you carry yourself go down there, you're gonna have to face the consequences of your actions. Do not by any means get pulled away into the things of this life and the things of this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, because you are not surrendered, because you can't wait upon God, because you think you know better than God, because you think you have made the right decision. Hello. No, Solomon in all his wisdom, still, still in all his wisdom, when he allowed himself to not become led by God anymore, found himself with all of these heathen women that God spoke against, found himself outside of the will of God. Listen to me. I don't care who you are, what you think, and how you feel. All of those things are irrelevant. What God says is what matters. And if God says no, and no, and if you're not going to answer it, don't move, don't make no decision. Do not put a foot outside until God says it is time. And whatever God says, 
work with it. It's not always going to be what it is that you want it to be, but it is what it is that it needs to be. God is a good father. He will not do anything to harm you. And you need to trust that and you need to trust him. Take it from me. Who let my love and my um, wanting to save people and wanting to, to see the good in everybody and no one discriminate because you say you don't love God and before me say, are you, well, you say you're not submitting, surrender, you don't have no relationship with him and before me to say hello, check what you about. I'm sitting there trying now to wait on you through that process and losing my soul along, along, along this line. No, 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 no. No, we can pray for you. We can pray for you, right? But we're not involved with self. You see this evangelism, dating something, wicked and bad. And don't do it. Once you allow the devil any form of foothold, he's going to take his time and come in because his plan is to kill, steal, and destroy. And he's not afraid of you. Listen to me. If he can lick your dung, he's going to lick your dung. And he will use anybody, any point, any time. He ain't scared. Who he's afraid of is who you serve. And the further away you are from that covenant and that protection, the easier it is for the devil to kill you. I could have died. I could have taken my own life when I found out what was happening and I was so hurt and I was so um, distraught and I go through this dark season. It could have been that. Cool. I could have go run him down with my shit, lick him, him lick me down, it's we die. <laughs> it could have been anything because the devil's plan was to destroy me. Good? Because that's what he does. I don't know where, who you are. I don't know what you're involved in. I don't know what you're considering. I don't know what you're thinking about. But may I tell you, look at me. Look into my eye. Not do it. Don't do it. It's not worth it. At the end of the day, you are going to come back to God. Sorry. And he's a good father. He has taken you back. He's going to take any one of you back as long as you come back with a, a truly repentant heart. Ooh, the bird's so nice. Nevertheless. And I'm a living testimony of the fact that God does reveal. Right? But I'm just encouraging somebody today. Don't put yourself through something that you don't need to go through. Do not walk away from God for anything, no matter how shiny it looked. Because that what I walked after and thought it was shiny. It was really just aluminum foil. Wrap up one stone, aluminum wrap over it, and it up one look up in a planet of listeners. The closer I got, I realized that this was fraud. This was fraudulent. It was not the real deal. By that time, I had moved out from under covenant. And so I was able for the devil to swipe at me and swipe at me good. Rather and so I hope anybody watching this will just take a look in yourself, especially if you're safe. You know, worth it. The man don't know God, you can go find God for himself. The woman don't know God, she go find God for herself. Once you are in covenant already, you are in the church already, no go to do go look for nothing, not, not out there. Keep your eyes on church. Matter of fact, keep your eyes on God. Look, keep your focus on God. Listen, the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The Bible tells us, Hello, bird, what are you doing? work, you know? Bird is being taken care of. And so God can provide for your physical needs. Your, he can provide for your emotional needs. God not just bless people with money and bless people with care and house and land and these things. God blesses you according to his will, and he knows the plans he has for you. He knows what he call you to, and he knows what he's going to do for you. But there's a process. Trust God. Don't get caught in the hype, don't get caught in the words, don't get caught in the what seems to be. Trust God. Anyways, oh, and before I lock on the video, if y'all know I was a yamed and I agree with that, like I was doing yamed because how the man I go tell me said them killing because I'm the police and police and nobody get there and me still did they look what wrong with me. <laughs> what is wrong with you? So, um, yeah, here comes the end of the video. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching. I know this one was a long one. And of course, the book again is finished. It's called Know That You're Gone, a collection of poems for the healing woman. And that book, that book now would chant, would um see the same thing I just told you about, but from an emotional perspective, not from um this side, but from the emotional perspective, it would kind of show you what was happening at certain points in time, how I was feeling, thoughts, stuff like that. It's been going on like it's been taking me a while to get everything together because there's so many pieces that I'm thinking do I include this, do I not include this, da da da. Um, because there's just so much around the, the situation. It did go on for a little bit of time. And so I really, really want to support guys. So the book is gonna come out as soon as I'm I've, I've really made the decision. I wanted this to come out on Wednesday because Wednesday is my birthday. Yay! Um but I don't think it will be ready for then. But nevertheless, just keep your eyes out. Tell a friend to tell a friend. 
um it's called now that you're gone a collection of poems of the healing woman and i say healing because healing is not an overnight process it is a continuous process as i uncover like an onion the things that god wants to change about me and the things that god wants to heal me from i will continue to heal and so thank you guys for watching this is life with Nessa and i i really am grateful for all of you who have subscribed already and those if you're not subscribed as yet please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and like this video if it is that you found value in what is it is that we just talked about share the video with somebody who you think would know it um yeah share the video <laughs> comment down below um if you've had a similar story if you've walked away from god at any point in time if you know about the redeeming power of god if this meant something to you if you, whatever your takeaway from just go ahead and comment down below i always try to respond to the comments as much as possible follow us on I, in, uh, instagram at life with nessa underscore nine i will leave the link down in the description and love or no be up on yourself again have a great day Mwah.